Mike Hughes here with another video sermon for you. These sermons are meant to edify, to build you up in the most holy faith. If you're a first-time YouTuber, we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're on Facebook, please like us on Facebook. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, SPH Church of Christ. And I think Twitter is SPH Church. I'll have the links to those places in the description below. And also we're on uh, Instagram and I believe Snapchat. So check us out on those places. And now let's jump into the video. In John chapter 8 and verse 32, Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Want to look in this lesson today at the truth and some questions regarding the truth. Over in John chapter 18 and verse 38, Pilate asked the question, What is truth? The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 11 and verse 4 says, But what is God's reply to him? We're interested in what God says the truth is, not what some man says. Paul said in Acts chapter 27 verse 25 that I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. I believe God today. Why? Why? Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18 says, By two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. So as we look at the truth today, I ask the question, what is the answer of God? God said the truth is that this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear you Him. You hear my son, today as we seek out what the truth is, we're to look at what Jesus says. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 2, we find that it says there has in, he has in these last days spoken to us by his son. Once again, John 8 and 32, Jesus said, you shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. So it is possible for us to determine what the truth is. A lot of people, like Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 3 today, are deceived like Eve was. He said, I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted by the simplicity that is in Christ. Simplicity in Christ. The truth is very simple. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 4, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. When we study the Word, we may understand the mystery. In John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He further says in John 17 and verse 17, Sanctify them by your truth. Watch this now. Your word is truth. He says in the gospel of your salvation is the truth we heard. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13, the Apostle Paul says there, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. What is that word of truth, Paul? He said the gospel of your salvation. Jesus said in John chapter 12 and verse 48, he who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. What's that, Jesus? The word that I have spoken. Jesus said the words that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. In Romans chapter 2 and in verse 16. In the day when God will judge, watch this now, the secrets of men, how? By Jesus Christ. According, Paul says, to my gospel. 
Christ and his word, the gospel, are the truth. Then why should we have such grave concern about the truth? Well, that's because we're all in the bondage of sin. Satan and sin, Satan has man in, first of all, the bondage of sin. In Romans chapter 6, verse 17, God be thanked that though you were the slaves of sin, men are enslaved to sin today. We find also in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 22, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, the only way to break this chain of bondage of sin, of guilt from past sins, and of the kingdom of darkness is by obeying the truth and purifying your soul. Talks about the kingdom of darkness in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. He's delivered us from the power of darkness, that is, that kingdom of darkness, and he has translated us or conveyed us into the kingdom of his son, the son of his love, in whom we have, watch this, redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. That bondage that he has of fear, of death, of judgment, uh, to come of torment. We see in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 55, the question Paul asks is, O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of sin is death, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory, watch this, through Jesus our Lord. Therefore, conclusion drawn when you see a therefore you find out why it's there here it is therefore the conclusion my beloved brother because of this be steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord then in first John chapter 4 and in verse 17 love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness, watch this, in the day of judgment. Why is that, John? Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but love casts out perfect fear because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. When you obey the gospel, when you hear the truth, obey the truth, then we see that we break this chain of bondage. We break this chain of guilt from past sin. We break this chain of being in the kingdom of darkness, and we break this chain of fear, of death, of judgment, and of torment that separates God and man. This bondage, this grip that Satan has on man. In John chapter 8 and verse 32, once again, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth is what's important. The truth is what will free us from this chain of bondage. Well, then the question comes, when does the truth make one free? When does truth break this chain of bondage, of guilt from past sins, of the kingdom of darkness, of fear, of death, of judgment, of torment that Satan has over man as a sinner. Already seen John 8, 32, that the truth will make you free. When's that going to happen? In 1 Timothy chapter 2 and in verse 3, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, watch this, who desires all men to be saved, and watch this, to come to a knowledge of the truth. God wants us to, become, to come to a knowledge of the truth. He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. It's God and not man. 
It's the message, not the messenger, that's what's important. The messenger brings the message, but the message is what's important. The gospel is what's important to be presented. In Acts chapter 8 and verse 30, we see that Philip ran to the eunuch, heard him reading out of the prophet Isaiah, and said, Do you understand what you read? The eunuch replies, How can I unless someone guides me? He asked Philip to come sit with him, and the place in the scripture where he read was in Isaiah 53. Now, what was that he read? Well, he said that he read, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away, and who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And so the eunuch answered Peter, Philip, and he said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or some other man? And what was Philip's reply? Philip began, he opened his mouth, beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. So we see that who Isaiah was prophesying about was Jesus Christ. And so he taught the eunuch the truth at that point. In 2 Peter, in chapter 1 and in verse 3, his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. How is that? Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. How did that happen? 2 Peter 1 verse 21, holy men of God spake as they were, watch this, moved by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit searched the mind of God and revealed it to these holy men who were earthen vessels who wrote down what they received and put it in the Bible, the word of truth. In Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 3, the apostle Paul says it this way. How that by revelation, that's that process he's talking about, that process that he just went through there in 2 Peter 1 and verse 21. He made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written already by, watch verse 4, which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men. And it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. So Paul is saying exactly what Peter said in 2 Peter 1 and verse 21 about this whole process. That the Spirit revealed it, the mind of God, to the holy apostles and prophets. And why? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body, partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. Paul says in Romans chapter 1 and in verse 15, so much he says, as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. I'm ready to preach it. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first, also to the Greek, for in it is the righteousness of God revealed. There's that revealing process that we talked about. The righteousness of God's revealed through the Holy Spirit. Now, we've already learned from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Philippians 2, verse 16. Holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Paul said in 1 Timothy 3 verse 15, If I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. Watch this now. The pillar and ground of truth. The church teaches the truth. The mission of the church is the preaching of the gospel. Acts 24 and verse 25, as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and judgment to come, Paul reasons with Felix. Felix was afraid and answered, go away for now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you. David said in Psalm 119 and verse 172, 
My tongue shall speak of your word, for all your commandments are righteous. The truth is righteous. Also, we see that the truth in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and in verse 5 that he says, casting down arguments and every high thing, he says here, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. It teaches us how to live right. It teaches us how we're to think and then we see that we'll all face the judgment. He says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Again, when does the truth set us free from this chain of bondage, of guilt of past sins, of the kingdom of darkness, of the fear of death, judgment, torment to come that man has? Well, in Acts chapter 26, we already saw Agrippa. And we see in John chapter 1 and in verse 1, we see that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Jesus is the Word. The Word we already learned in John 12 verse 48 that His Word is going to judge us in the last day. All things were made through him, that is, that word. Without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life. Life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend. He said there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light. That was John the baptizer. That all through him might believe. So we see belief is very important. He was not the light, that is, John was not the light, but he was to bear witness of that light, Jesus Christ. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. The world did not know him. He came to his own. His own did not receive them, but as many as received him, watch this, he gave them the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. So we see that it starts with belief. But we see in John chapter 3 and verse 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But we see that it's not by salvation by faith only. It's not salvation at the point of faith, at the point of, of belief. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. But it doesn't stop there at belief. For the Jew first, also to the Greek. We find in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21, For since in the wisdom of God the world through wisdom did not know God, watch this, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. And John, someone says, well, what about Acts 16 verse 31? So they say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved in your household. So it becomes a question then, of when when does truth make us free when does it do that well Acts 16 and 31 again believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved it's not is it at the point of belief well we'll find out we'll look at the question and the answer of God is what we're interested in what does the answer of God say when the truth will set us free from the bondage of sin, from the guilt from past sins, from the kingdom of darkness, from the fear of death, judgment, and torment? When will that happen? What is the answer of God? Well, the answer of God. In John chapter 12 and in verse 42, he helps us with that answer. Over in the book of John, in John chapter 12 
and in verse 42, John chapter 12, and in verse 42, we find that nevertheless, even among some of the rulers, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. So we see that it's not just belief, it's not at the point of belief. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 22, since you have purified your souls in, oh, watch this, obeying the truth. Not just believing the truth, but also obeying the truth. So what did they do? They obeyed the truth. In John 3 verse 21, he who does the truth, see there's doing something, comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. In John chapter 3 and verse 36, he who believes in the Son has everlasting life. He who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides in him. Now it's important to believe in the Son for sure. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 8 and 9, we see that flaming fire is going to come flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God. And, but also on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not just believe, but obey. There are many who believe, but there are many more who don't obey. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28 and in verse 19 to go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you all the way even to the end of the age. In Galatians chapter 3 and in verse 26, he tells us you're all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, watch this, into Christ, have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Gentile. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. You're all one in Christ. If you're in Christ, you're heirs according to to the promise. Now notice, in Christ, we see, once you're in Christ, you've obeyed the gospel, then you're set free from sin. We see in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17, John 10 verse 9, Ephesians 1 verse 7, Colossians 1, verse 18 and 19, how we're translated from the power of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. Notice this, this chart. Here on the left is the kingdom of darkness, Satan, the bondage of sin, fear of death and torment. But then when we're translated in the kingdom of God's dear Son, the Son of His love, we're in Christ where salvation is, where freedom is, where the truth is, where the church is the pillar and the ground of the truth. And so we see Mark 16, 15, and 16. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. He who does not believe shall be condemned. Jesus told them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Luke 8, he tells the parable about a sower who went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed his seed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down. The birds devoured it. The seed is sown, but not everyone will take to the seed. So when we look at the truth, first of all, we see we are not to hold on to the truth. That's not, we're not to keep it to ourselves. 
Romans chapter 1 and verse 18, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, unrighteousness of men who, watch this, suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Don't suppress the truth. We're also not to change the truth. You recall the devil in Genesis chapter 3 said that you shall not surely die. Knots in the devil's tail there. He changed the truth as God had told them the truth. In Revelation 22 and verse 18, John says there, Jesus says through John, For I testify to everyone who hears the word of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues written in this book. And in Romans chapter 1 and verse 25, Paul talks about those who exchange the truth of God for a lie, worship, and serve the creature rather than the Creator. There are those who did that. So don't change the truth. Don't speak evil of the truth. There were false prophets among the people, Peter said. Even as there will be false teachers among you. What did they do, Peter? They bring in, they secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who brought them and bring on themselves swift destruction and many will follow their destructive, pernicious ways because the way of truth will be blasphemed. Error is always brought in in private setting. You never find anyone getting right up into the pulpit, coming in just very brand new, getting right up into the pulpit teaching error. They go house to house, they teach it in private, they bring it in secretly, and then it's brought in. So don't speak evil of the truth. Then don't resist the truth. In 2 Timothy 3 and verse 8, the Apostle Paul tells the young preacher Timothy, as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, that was two of uh, Pharaoh's servants back in the day, in that day, in Exodus, so do these also resist the truth. What are they? Men of corrupt minds, disapproved concerning the faith. So don't resist the truth. And then don't turn away from the truth. They turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fable, Paul said in 2 Timothy 4 and in verse 4. So that's the things we're not to do to the truth. We're not to hold it. We're not to change it. We're not to speak evil of it. We're not to resist it. We're not to turn away from the truth. We're to teach the truth. Take the truth to others. The truth. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10, Paul says, with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. Why did they perish, Paul? Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Well, what did they do? Well, first of all, what we need to do with the truth that they didn't do, they didn't hold the truth, we need to hold the truth. In Psalm 119, verse 97, David says, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Do you love the law of the Lord? We need to live the truth. We need to let our conduct, we need to let our lifestyle be worthy of the gospel so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. I remember one time receiving a letter from Eugene Brittnell. And in the bottom, the salutation, I guess they call that, where, where you're ending the letter, instead of saying yours in the Lord or anything like that, he simply wrote Philippians 1.27 and signed his name. I got curious about that. So I went and looked this passage up. And I just and I read this passage, I understood exactly why he put it in that letter. It makes a good ending in a letter. Philippians 1.27, let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ. How do you live? Are you worthy of the gospel? Are you worthy to be called a Christian? Some would say, if you were on trial for a Christian, would there be a, being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you of being a Christian? He says, so that whether I come, that is, he'll see you. 
or am absent, not there. I may hear of your affairs, and what's your affairs? That you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Why is that? Because he's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. So live the truth. Don't be ashamed of the gospel for it's the power of God to salvation. To everyone who believes, to the Jew first, also to the Greek, because the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel. We also need to learn how to handle the truth, handle the truth right. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, watch this, rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to learn how to hold fast to the truth. We need to learn how to conduct ourselves in the house of God, which is the pillar and the ground of truth. The church is to hold fast to the truth. Hold fast to the word of life. Paul says in Philippians 2, verse 16. And why is that, Paul? So that he can rejoice in the day of Christ, that he hadn't run in vain or labored in vain because he had labored among the Philippians. In Philippians 1 and verse 17, we need to defend the truth. He says, knowing I'm appointed for the defense of the gospel, we need to earnestly contend for the faith which was once for all delivered to the the saints. So the question then becomes, what are you going to do about the truth? You've heard the truth. No denying the truth. So what are you going to do? Are you going to admit to the truth? Paul said, I believe God that it would be just as it was told me. David says, my heart stands in awe of your word. Will you believe God that it's like he tells you in the Bible? Do you stand in awe of the word of God? Or do you like tradition or what your parents thought, your grandparents thought? Or do you like the truth? Will you submit to the truth? 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5, we're to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Will you submit by obeying the truth? Or will you transmit the truth? Will you tell others the truth? The things that you have heard, Paul tells Timothy, from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men. That is, transmit them, teach them to other men. And what are they going to do? They're going to teach others also. We're to take heed to ourselves, to the doctrine. We're to continue in them. Paul told Timothy, in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Will you admit, submit, and transmit the truth so that, what's the so that? Colossians 3 and verse 4, when Christ who is our life appears then you also, watch this, will appear with him in glory. You need to obey the truth. And what's the truth? Here's the truth about the gospel. We're to hear the word. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We need to believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. He's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. John 8 and verse 24. Jesus said, unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Then we need to repent. Will I repent of my sin? Jesus said, I tell you, no, except you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Someone says, well, what about that man in the deepest, deepest, darkest cave of Africa? Paul answered that question in Acts 17 and verse 30. He said, the time of this ignorance, God overlooked. God used to overlook that. But now commands all men everywhere to repent. 
I have an obligation to find that man, to teach that man the gospel of Christ. You do too. Will I confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God? Whosoever confesses me before men, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven, Jesus said. We find that confession unto salvation is made with the mouth, Romans 10 and verse 10. In Acts chapter 8 and verse 37, we find that the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Philip said, If you believe, you may. And the confession he made is, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And after that, we find that Philip baptized him. We find that baptism is an immersion in water. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 3, do you not know as many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk together, walk in newness of life, for we have been united together in the likeness of his death. Watch this. Certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man, what? Was crucified with him, that the mighty body of sin might be done away with. We're buried with him in baptism, Colossians 2 and verse 12, in which we're raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. He says in verse 13, you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Will you obey the truth today? We thank you for watching this video. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell if you would like to be notified of when other videos, other sermons will be coming up online. We hope to start uh, classroom material pretty soon, uh, maybe a study through Ephesians where we were when the epidemic, the pandemic, uh, hit that we couldn't uh, meet anymore. We'll start with that one, I believe, on our Wednesday night study. And so that should be coming up shortly. Again, thank you for watching this video sermon from the Spring Hill Church of Christ meeting at 405 Butler Street in Spring Hill, Louisiana. We invite you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, there's a video that we would like for you to watch if you'd like to, the next video. And also, we'll give you a link to another site that we think that would be of interest to you of other sermons. And so, thank you for watching.